Dear friends, welcome to the live conversation on Alatra TV. Today we have a very special guest with us, but before I introduce him, I would like to tell you the format of our online communication. So at the end of this program, we will ask our guest about one person he would like to meet and to talk to about Creative Society. And we will need your help to pass this video along on all social medias so we can reach that person. And to do that, we're gonna use the rule of six handshakes. That means that we are all connected to each other through six or less handshakes or social connections. So to get started, um, we will introduce our guests, but for to pass that video along, please use two hashtags so we can track the video. It's hashtag Alatra Unites, hashtag Creative Society. So today's guest is um, very special to us because he is a speaker, he is an author, he is a TEDx speaker, he is a success coach, and he also is a VP of Global Communications and Chair for Global Goodwill Ambassadors, and he also is a marine biologist. So today with us, we have Dr. Alexander Evergreen. Welcome. And thank you for being with us. And if you can tell us a little bit about your background and how did you start in the coaching business and how did you, you know, career evolve to what are you doing today? Well, firstly, thank you very much for having me. I'm very, uh, very flattered to be here. And my name is Alexander Evergreen and I am originally from Holland. I'm 48 years old and at the moment I'm living in Cambodia. I lived all over the world uh, many years back, two decades back. I moved to China and I lived in Ghana, Malawi. I lived in Singapore, Thailand and Cambodia and I can go on for a lot. I traveled the whole world and my background is I come from a little village, uh, moved from that little village to Gouda. Many people know that where the cheese come from. Uh, my uh, father was always in antiques, so I always wanted to do something in that. But at a certain point, people told me I was good in talking. So uh, I was asked for a few uh, companies to work for as a direct selling uh, product. I didn't like that. And at a certain point, I decided to do that. That company was uh, run by a huge organization in the US and their spokesperson was Brian Tracy. And Brian Tracy, as we all know, is a very successful coach. And uh, when I was a young boy, uh, I became one of the top uh, salespeople in the world, and they brought me to America, to Nashville, Opryland, that was the biggest convention hotel in the world at that time, and I met him, and I spoke to him, I was on stage, and uh, backstage he came to me, he said, Alex, he said, listen, you have to become a comedian or a speaker, because you are really good in, in talking, and you talk so much, and if you start to learn the structure in talking, something you should do, so I always stayed in sales and speaking, and bit by bit that evolved, uh, I started doing more in uh, in, in real estate, uh, but besides the point, I always had a love for diving on the water world and uh, started doing things in petty. Uh, I had all my uh, certificates as an instructor as well. Then I started doing TDI, technical diving, and my love became so big for that that I decided also I wanted to do things in marine biology, so understanding the ocean, the corals, and everything that lives in it. So I also was fortunate to do a big project uh, here in Cambodia for Marine Conservation Cambodia to check the, the quality bleaching uh, of the, the quality of corals for bleaching and the seahorse population, because seahorses are very susceptible for quality of uh, water. And this is actually a short story of, of who I am. And besides the point, living all over the world, I always thought that I was very fortunate to do that. So that also means that I always wanted to help other people as well. So I started doing projects in Malawi for children who lost their parents due to AIDS and HIV. And uh, in Ghana, people uh, who had children with Down syndrome, that was always uh, very difficult. So we start a New Horizon project. I was busy with Bico, there's an organization in China with children who were born with a disability and it had been split lip, open back. So I did many things there. Did things in Singapore and now here uh, in, in uh, Cambodia, same thing. And I'm very, very dear to Global Google Ambassadors because what they do is global. And what I always did is like in every country separately. And with GGA, we do actually everything uh, yeah, from one point 
reaching out to the whole world with more than 16 and a half thousand humanitarians. And the benefit is, uh, as me uh, do a lot of talking, at a certain point, I became the, the vice president of uh, global communi communications. I do the newsletter and I like to communicate with people how to help them to move forward in, in everything what they're doing. And again, I can talk for three hours more. So I try to, <laughs> maybe it's a little bit messy, but I try to put it in a little bowl. Oh, thank you so much. That was a great, great overview. And if I can ask our IT team to bring up a collage of pictures that we have for you as a little surprise, and you can tell us a little bit about what you see up on the screen. Okay, what I see, if I'm looking at uh, one side, uh, I see me speaking at uh, the TEDx uh, event. I had a TEDx event here in Cambodia. And the topic that I was uh, talking about was change your mindset uh, and belief. Then you will also change the result because that's actually everything what, uh, what is a problem right now. Many people uh, are fixated on mindset. And if they don't change that mindset, the results will also not change because it's, it's very stupid to think if you keep doing the same thing that the results will be different. So that was my talk and actually very, very good. Uh, I think now around 17,000 views. Pretty good. Then uh, you see a picture with uh, my computer and a few books. Well, uh, I'm also an author. Uh, my books you can find on Amazon. Uh, my first book, uh, I have actually my first book here. This is How to Become a Great Manager. is also in the Library of Congress in the US. And I wrote many books. I wrote 11 books. Uh, I have a few here. I will not, but I got a few here. I will send the two of you also uh, one of my copies. Sign it for you and send it to you. Then I will uh, I will see one picture that's from GGA, and that's when I was promoted to uh, vice president of global communications, and I'm very grateful that uh, Richard and Lisa are the two uh, yeah, front runners, uh, founders and CEO president, and they put a lot of trust in me in helping them and supporting them, and we have a great family, amazing people. And so that's one of the pictures. Then you see one picture of me diving uh, in front of me. You see a little nudibranch. Nudibranch is a little snail with the lungs on their back. So they have external lungs. And then you see on the total left side for me, uh, sorry, right side, you see uh, Oknya Kitming. And that's one of the most successful business people here in Cambodia. Uh, also most, most wealthy. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing what that gentleman is doing. He has huge companies and very influential, very uh, focused on what he's doing. And that's why I like to learn from people like that. And I was fortunate enough to meet him a few times and a few times dinner with him. And at the top, you see a picture with a lot of uh, children and people. And again, this is also a project that we were doing in Cambodia with uh, people who are less fortunate than me. And as, uh, yeah. I love to do that, helping people, seeing smiles on people's faces. And sometimes it's just the smallest things that change people's mindset. So these are the pictures as far as I see. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Those are great pictures. I like the one that underwater that looks beautiful. Um, so also, since you're a coach, uh, I have a question for you. How important is it to talk, to spread positive news, to talk about positive things and have positive information in the media today? Well, the thing is, positivity is not only uh, saying Chaka, yes, and, and all these things. Fantastic, of course, when you uh, when you express positivity. But the main thing is also that people forget if you're positive, if you have positive energy flowing through your body, it's also better for your health. Many people are depressed uh, because they think negative. They read the newspaper, listen to all the nonsense that they find online. They should just step away from that because positivity uh, is is creating growth, it's creating opportunities, it's creating a better relationship. Uh, you are having a better relationship at work, a better relationship with your spouse, with your children. And, and it's so simple because it's just the way you look at things. If you see problems in everything, but I see also see a problem, but I see it as an opportunity and as uh, a challenge. I challenge myself to solve that problem. So I'm looking for the solution. And that's all a mindset. And again, I think during this, this great meeting, you will hear me say a few more times, it's all based on mindset. If your mindset is right, the rest will follow. Thanks so much. That makes total sense. And then I know you said the mindset, 
But sometimes people would say, well, I don't have a choice. This is what's showing to me. Or I don't have a choice. Like, this is the news that I run into. But do we really have that choice? Yes. Because everything in life is a choice. You make that choice every morning to open that laptop and start reading that crap. And sorry for my English, but it's true. And you make that choice to have your 20 friends and 18 of them calling you the whole day and overloading you with negative energy, negative information. If these people constantly injecting you with negativity, cut them away. If they don't contribute to a better life, to more happiness, that means they don't contribute anyway. So that's what I did. I had a thousand people that I knew, and many people called them friends, but I knew a thousand people. And out of the thousand people, maybe 600 were not contributing anything. And then I said, very polite, listen, you're a great person, but time for me to move on. I hope that everything goes well with you. I wish you all the best. If there's anything that I can do, feel free to send me a positive message. And you add that little thing, send me a positive message, and I will see where I can help you. Have a great life. And then you disconnect from those people because this is not connecting to people. This is just having a lot of names in a list on whatever uh, social media we're using. But I mean, interacting with people, meeting someone, and having a nice talk with someone, knowing a small conversation to, to get started. So that's it. That's actually interesting because if there is supply, there is demand, right? So if we don't put our attention towards the negative information, if we don't read it and there's no demand, then we, of course we will get what we put our attention towards. So oh, we are the suppliers. If we supply positive energy, that means the negative will start flooding away. And people say like, oh, people don't look at that. So how can we... Uh, deviate from, from the negativity to the positivity and how can we benefit from it because people always look where's the benefit and as I told you shortly before that in the newspaper is loaded with negative energy because that sells but the moment that nobody wants to buy a negative newspaper anymore and people start to ask like do you have a newspaper with some good news in it uh, yeah, yeah, yeah well we have a very thin one in the back but the moment they start selling the, the, the seller will buy more to sell more to the customers and this is the same thing with our mindset. If our mindset is overflowed with positive energy, I mean, in the evening you're enjoying, you know, you go home, you say, oh, we have dinner because we have some nice conversations because I had some great things going on during the day and my children had something great and my wife had something great and my, my dog had something great instead of like, well, okay, let's go. And, and that's the mindset because they start, oh, my teacher this and my boss this and and you go to bed totally, everything is still cranking and whatever. And, and that's people thrive on the wrong energy. And that will bring the whole world down at a certain point. Yes, yes. And it's interesting. I always uh, say to myself, don't be part of the problem, but be part of the solution, right? So if we take that responsibility or be the solution. and we add Correct. to try to solve something and be part of the solution that will definitely achieve um, it. And also, um, I would like to say on the platform of Alatra International Public Movement, we have a project right now called Creative Society, where we talk about a world where uh, people all over the world would be happy and comfortable living. And uh, it is a global project. We take interviews um, globally from people everywhere to see what kind of, how do they envision this creative society? How do they want to live? And today also, we would like to ask you this question. How do you see a creative society where all people in the world are happy, where they all have enough, enough food, enough water, high quality education, um, great medicine, preventative medicine? Those are just some of the things that I know for myself. But how do you envision it? Well, my uh, envisionment of the whole concept is actually very simple, and that means balance. The moment, let's say, humankind start creating balance in life, and not only balance in your own life, but balance in people's life. And that starts with yourself. If I go outside and I step into my beautiful car, going from my beautiful house to my beautiful office, it's all mine, my house, into my car, into my beautiful, big, very expensive office, and then I pass people who got nothing. My benefit is, as a person, as a human being, that I respect every person, a millionaire or the cleaner, I don't care, because without the cleaner, everything will look like a mess. So I respect that person as much as a banker, because the banker is actually, I don't want to be uh, upsetting a lot of bankers, but they 
yeah, costing money because they sitting there getting huge salaries and they don't know anything for me. But that cleaner is doing something for me because when I go outside, I'm like, man, the flowers look nice and the streets are nice and fantastic. And I say, hey, thank you very much. So first, show our appreciation to what every person is doing. So you're creating already a mental equality. I'm not, not saying like a heart surgeon and someone who's sweeping the street are in that sense the same, but they're still the same human beings. So I respect them both. Although this person has a lot of uh, knowledge that he needs for what he's doing and sweeping the floor is a little bit less, but maybe this poor person who's sweeping the street was not fortunate enough to be able to do that very expensive education, but maybe knowledge-wise when he had the opportunity, he could have become that same doctor. So if we start uh, seeing people as our equals and not putting ourselves above other people, that's the first step. Then the second thing is if I got a, a phone and I got a beautiful Galaxy Note 10 Plus, you know, state of the art, the latest of the latest. And tomorrow there will be a Note 11. 95% of the people say, oh, how quick can this one break to buy a new one? We have to choose that sometimes it's enough. So if we have something, take good care of it. And that means that if we take care of it, there is more left to share with less fortunate. So when we start helping other people, for instance, that we can donate some money to a project where there is education, that means those people who now get the opportunity to get a good education are maybe very clever people without our intervention of donating something would never have the opportunity to become a lawyer or whatever. And that lawyer is maybe so clever that he become a government person. And maybe that government person is so clever that he become a president. So by our intervention of changing the way we think and seeing all the material things around us, that small donation can change a person's life who should end up on the street now becoming a president. Because there is no end of vision and belief. And I believe that everything is possible as long as you put your mind to it. So mindset doesn't cost anything. So you don't need a big fat wallet with a lot of money. But if you put your mind to it and then people support you in your belief and then your commitment is there and that's being backed up by people who know what they're doing. So pointing you in the right direction. So supporting each other again, it doesn't cost anything. And this is the basics of seeing that equality and see the world that every person got food because we educate people in Africa who were less fortunate. We educate them how to plant things, how to uh, take care of the land. Uh, and, and it's just one step because it doesn't mean that every African person all of a sudden start farming, but maybe very clever people living in a remote area. Uh, we send them to the, the village, sorry, from the village to the city that they can follow an education and become a doctor. And by becoming a doctor, they can save lives for ch children who are born in rural areas. It's all that simple. And the moment you start seeing that and you start spreading that word, the same thing what we're doing with GTA and your beautiful project, that's how it all starts. It's all believing in yourself and willing to share. And what I always hope is when I train people, when I coach people, when I motivate people, I want people to surpass me. I want people to become better than, than I, because that means I did something right. I never feel like, oh, now I'm being passed, so now they are better than, than I am or than me. That's not the way it is, because if you educate people, if you train people, and they become better than you, that means I did a great job. So when I'm sitting in my chair reading a positive book, most likely one of my own books, but I'm reading a book, and I'm like, man, I'm looking at the beautiful moon, I did a great job. This person became better than me. And the only thing I did is support him. I didn't finance everything. I am just changed the way that person thought about himself or herself. And then don't get me wrong, because I am also for gender equality. For me, it doesn't matter. Being run by a lady, by a man, I think the best person should run whatever they do. As long as they do it fair, straightforward, and they understand what they're talking about. No double agendas. And that's the biggest problem right now. People having so many agendas that we're losing focus on what's going on right now. And now we're being pushed on the facts with the whole COVID-19 problem. Then all of a sudden, like, wow. Now I also understand how animals live. They sit in a, in a cage, but not for a month, but their whole life. Now we know how it feels to be in lockdown in our own house and how to do it. But it's also giving us time to start reflecting on what we are doing for other people and for the world itself. And many times people say, actually, I don't do dipshit anything for anyone else. It's all about me, 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 me. I understand you don't have to share all your savings and whatever with other people. Start with sharing what you know 
and that can bring positive outcomes to other people. And that's the beginning. Yeah, it's not all I about money. To... It's all about yeah. mindset. Yeah, I have to agree that money has nothing to do with sharing, you know, positivity, sharing love, sharing kindness, even sharing a skill that you know with someone who doesn't know the skill. You never know how you're going to affect that person in that moment and what type of, you know, chain of reaction you're going to create. But just by using a little bit of kindness that we all have, we don't have to go buy it. We don't have to, you know, sell something to buy it. It's already in us. It's part of us. Part of us. So I well, also want to, Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I also wanted to ask you this question. I know you have traveled and lived in many countries around the globe and you speak seven languages. So what do you think unites all people all over the world? Well, the, the thing is, the language is something you can learn. What unites people around the world is they all have the same idea in the end. They want to be happy. So it doesn't matter what language you speak, but it opened up so many doors when I moved to China and I start understanding Chinese and start speaking Chinese. You reach 1.6 billion people. When I was speaking Dutch in a small, small country, 17 million people, and I started speaking English when I was young, you reach 2.8, 2.9 billion people. So when you move to Africa and you speak, start speaking the local languages, it opened up door. So speaking more languages opened more doors because you have more ability to communicate with people who don't speak your language at that point. But the benefit is, me as a speaker, I speak 70% of the time with my hands and with my body language. The way I express things, the emotions, the smile, the energy, that's already, because many times I spoke to people without speaking their language and having a great time, a big smile on their face, what we can do in pointing things, we can get things done. So that's what I love. The whole world, a language is just something bounded to an area. But we're all able to learn. And again, that has nothing to do with money. Because if you really put your mind to it, you can learn any language. And that's what I did. Because I saw the benefit of speaking more languages because then I can reach more people. And by reaching more people, I can spread positive energy and, and a positive mindset and belief in themselves. Many areas where people are less fortunate, they are poor. Many times they point to a job, but easy for you. And then I say, so how do you see it's easy for me? So what is your rent? They said, oh, no, I don't rent because we own this land. I said, okay, I'm living, and not anymore, but at that time, I'm living in a house. I pay 1,300 euro rent. Every month, I have to pay the rent. So 15, 16, 17,000 euro rent per year. I have to. If not, they throw me out. And you say, you don't pay rent because you own your own land. Yeah, but I'm only doing rice. What is your rice? I have to go to my bus every morning. And the bus yelling at me, don't do this, don't do that. But you can do whatever you want because you can make the decision to grow and I'm here to help you. How can I support you to make your business better and bigger? And that's amazing. And then all of a sudden, those language barriers are gone. It doesn't matter where you are in the whole world. And then you say, don't look at me as a man, as what color I have or what education or where I come from. It doesn't matter. We're all equal and we all have the same opportunity as long as we work together. And I have to agree with you. And I like that you said that all people are united by the fact that they want to be happy. And I have to say that it is true. Everybody wants to be happy. But I think, unfortunately, I don't know if we see um, that everybody's happy today in our society. And also, my question is, how do you think, how can we make it so that this positive news spreads? So, why isn't it that people are talking about it more? Why isn't it that people are talking about creative society? What can each person do in order for this to happen, in order for us to live better? I, thought, I, I think we just lost the connection for um, Alexander, but hopefully he'll come back to us uh, in a few minutes and I'm sure he still can hear it. But yes, Olga, I agree that, you know, what can we do and why are we not living in the society that we envision? What is preventing us? And really, like for me, I have this understanding that uh, we don't even talk about it. So when we don't even talk about like what type of society I want to live in, what type of society I want to for my kids, I want what this, what this future is holding for all of us, then we can't achieve it. We can't aim for it. We can't strive for it. And another understanding is that there are so many example, 
examples of a creative society in different parts of uh, the world. So some countries have free education, some countries have free healthcare, some countries have you know, something else that we can all share, combine, learn from. And this is how we can share experiences around the globe and can become this global community that strives for this happiness. And happiness actually, you know, is internal, but to have that, you also have to have basics in place. So this is my understanding of why we are not there yet. Yes, I have to agree with you that talking about it, it is what um, what will make it come true. I definitely agree. Um, okay, so we'll, we're going to wait a couple more minutes for... Um, for him to come back. Yeah. For him to come back, and then we'll continue conversation. And if he's not back, because there might be some kind of internet problems, we already had such an amazing conversation, and I think we all understand the positive thinking and changing of the mindset and just being responsible for your own surroundings of what do you accept, accept and what you don't accept as information. And I think he's joining back in. Uh, so we'll uh, continue. And also, the this is a good time to remind our viewers that, um, uh, yep, he joined back that uh, we, at the end, we're going to ask our guest to share with us one person that he would like to meet and talk about creative society with. And then we're going to ask our viewers to share this video and to see if the rule of six handshakes works. And here he's back. We're happy you can connect back to us. I tried many times because it's still Cambodia. Cambodia sometimes it just all of a sudden it was gone. I was like, is it my fault? Because I'm checking my internet connection. It was really strong, but I don't know what happened. Sorry. That's okay, but that actually brings us to a great point. In a creative society, I believe that everyone ha has to have Wi-Fi that is working so we all can freely communicate with each other, whether it is by Skype, by phone, we are always reachable. No one has to be, you know, staying out in the black. <laughs> we all have to be connected. <laughs> Well, the, the thing you have to keep in mind, uh, it, it is many times choices. Uh, Cambodia is a beautiful country, uh, very uh, stable GDP, uh, but it's still uh, a country that is developing. So also the internet I'm using in uh, uh, in the office two different uh, Wi-Fi, so upstairs and downstairs, just to make sure that it's stable. And even when it's showing it's stable, sometimes it just it happens, you know, and it's gone. And I can sit here sweating. I'm like, oh, I got a beautiful interview with you beautiful ladies and I'm gone. The thing is, you know, it happened. I cannot change it at the moment. So the only thing I do is try to reconnect, stay positive, uh, and just say sorry in the end. That's it. Always keep smiling because it doesn't change. If I start screaming, yelling, sweating, it doesn't change because the internet still was gone for a few minutes. Yes, that's right. Any negative situation, we actually can change into opportunity. And it only depends on our reaction. And if we react negatively about something, well, that's not changing situation. It's just changing your own mindset about the situation. Well, not only yours, because the moment you start uh, expressing the negative energy, you're pulling other people in. Because they say, yeah, I agree with you, yeah, and then everybody is negative, and then you gain nothing. If you just keep smiling and listening, this happened. And, and you know the, the beautiful expression where the guy became very rich? Shit happened. That's, that's the way it is. The moment you accept it, things become way better. I agree. And I think with this, what this epidemic is teaching us is to accept uh, the current situation and just to go with the flow and everything is going to be okay. We just got to go through this moment together as a whole, you know, society as a, you know, as, as we are right now. So, and I know Olga had another question before we ask you the an, uh, final question about who you would like to meet. My question was, how important is it to talk about creative society today in order for people to actually stop and think for a moment about how do they want to live in the future? Well, I think it's very important because the moment you start thinking about a creative society that we're all having enough of everything, we have to start somewhere because we can talk about it when closed doors, when we have our beautiful uh, dinner with our spouses. But we have to bring it to the outside world. So now it's the time to start sharing because in the time of this pandemic, it's really, really bad. But now many people are at home. Many people are online. Many people are willing to communicate this situation. This is a really bad thing. But it's also bring us closer together. You see the, the medical people, they are really 
they're committing themselves to our safety and our well-being and these people I don't even know. So why is it not that we give back to them as well and creating this beautiful society that we're all longing for? Yeah, I never thought about it that way. So let's start now. Let's start today. Let's start sharing the good things, the positive things. How can we do it? When can we do it? And I will say, use the five W's. When, where, what, why, and who. If you understand those five W's, and then the only thing you say in the end, you say, how? How can we start? Well, very simple. Start today. Start sharing outside your comfort zone. Don't only go to your, your wife or your husband or your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Spread it. Sit in a, in a meeting when you're, or a birthday party and say, listen, guys, put all the phones down. Let's sit down. How do you feel today? What can we do to change the neighbor's life and the, 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 what, whatever you come up with? And then those small ideas become a big idea and they become a ball and they become a bigger ball, a skippy ball. And in the end, you got the whole globe. And that's it. It starts with yourself because that is very simple. If you put a drop in the ocean, it's just a drop. But if you've got 7.4 billion people putting a drop, well, you fill a few swimming pools. So it starts with that one simple thing. It's just a little input, and your input will change people's life. Their input will change your life. It becomes a visual circle, and things change for the better. That's how it works. In my opinion, it's that simple. It is not that hard. But only when you see it as difficult, it becomes difficult. And if you see it as a challenge, hey, that's fantastic. You remember the first time you learned swimming. You have to jump in. And then after two, three, four months, you're so good that you get your diploma. It was all a challenge. But if you just jump in and stop moving your arms, you're going to sink. Well, I you're like still that. here. So I think. Yes. And, and actually, it is simple, right? You just got to keep going. You just have to have that movement if you're moving towards the goal. It is all how you approach it. It is all yeah. an approach from a positive mindset. And it doesn't matter what you do. Your career, changing the world, uh, having a relationship. Uh, improving a relationship, improving your financial situations is all a mindset and believing in yourself. And if you believe in yourself, then other people start believing in you as well because you reflect that. People feel it. People see it. People taste it. And the moment people tasting your positive energy and you believe in yourself, they say, you know what? You want this job. You want to help other people. You want to do something, whatever. I'm giving you the opportunity. Let's do it. So those people are very positive, energized already by you having them in their team. And you get things done. And that means you affect the whole team in a positive way. So not affecting in a virus way, but in a positive virus way. It spreads. Yes, of course. Positivity spreads the same way. I agree. And uh, so before we move on, on to our question of whom you would like to meet, is there anything else you would like to add or is there anything you would like to wish uh, for our viewers today? Well, firstly, I wish all the people, uh, of course, in the whole world, all the best happiness, health, Wealth, of course, because wealth doesn't mean money wealth, but I mean wealth in here. So I wish them all the best. Uh, this pandemic is something that will, uh, that will pass, and I think it will bring a lot of people together. Uh, stay safe, believe in each other, see the positive thing, because again, this is something we have to learn from. And if you learn from this, that means the next time uh, it will be more easy when we have to handle uh, a tough situation like this. So stay positive and all stay safe. So this is for all the people in the world. Let's take care of each other. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, right now we would like to ask you who is that one person that you would like to meet and talk um, about Creative Society with? You can pick any person you would like. I can, I can. There's share this video and we're going to use the rule of 60 and shakes with two hashtags Alatra unites and hashtag creative society so go ahead and tell us why well i would like to uh to meet and to have uh kk diaz uh, joining uh, with this amazing uh, interview kk diaz is uh, is an amazing guy from south africa uh, he is uh, the founder of a game and he's also an author and a publisher. And he was uh, the one who inspired me to climb the Kilimanjaro. He did that. Uh, he wrote a book about climbing the Kilimanjaro and uh, he died on that mountain and he came back. So uh, you should actually read his book and I will also try to get him uh, in contact with you guys. That guy is an inspiration for every person. I mean, very energetic, very straightforward, very knowledgeable, hardworking, and a guy who's committed and helping changing uh, people's mindset and, and lives as well. And uh, he's a South African, he's a black South African guy, and it's amazing. I mean, we are 
really like they are two fingers on the same hand. I mean, it's amazing. That guy is awesome. And I think it will be a big, big contribution to listen to, uh, to this amazing gentleman, what he can bring to, uh, to the world. And, uh, and if I listen to him, uh, he's always giving a smile on my face and most likely on both of your face as well. Great. Well, we look forward to it. That'll be awesome if we can get him on and talk to him as well and ask him a few questions, of course. That'll be wonderful. And we'll try to uh, get him on. If you would like to learn more about the project Creative Society, please visit alatraunites.com. And uh, thank you so much, Alexander, for um, being with us today on Live Conversation on Alatra TV. We truly appreciate your time. And we know that it's morning time right now and you had to get up super early. So thank you so much. And um, have a good yes, day. Yes, I agree. Thank you so much, Alexander. It was our pleasure. And have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead of you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you very much for having me. It was an amazing uh an amazing meeting and very happy to meet you guys. Very happy to talk to you guys. And I'm looking forward to meet you the next time. Stay safe, be happy, and thank you very much.